Thank you so much, Madam Chair, and thank you, Chair Powell, for uh, being here with us today. Um, you know, as has been alluded to throughout this hearing, we have seen that supply bottlenecks uh, and pandemic-related factors have been one of the primary reasons that have led to price increases, whether it's computer chip complications uh, with, uh, you know, delaying the production of new vehicles, prompting a rush on used vehicles, uh, the price of lumber, um, shipping container logistics, et cetera. Uh, we know that these price increases were, were not caused by changes in interest rates. Uh, they were caused by supply chain complications. Um, now, just to reiterate, you have said that these price increases are transitionatory, uh, trans transitory, correct? Yes. Yeah, we, we said that we, th we think they will be. We, of course, we lack certainty on that, but we do believe that's the case. Thank you. Uh, and if drivers of recent inflation are supply chain issues and potential areas of underinvestment, do you think that these issues are best resolved through investments making that supply chain more resilient or higher interest rates? Well, you know, if if we see things that are that are temporary or transitory and that should move through and, and go away because they're associated with an event, the opening of the economy, then it would be inappropriate for us to tighten policy, which really has a, the point of which is to slow down economic activity and slow the recovery. It would be inappropriate. It's a difficult okay. judgment to make, though, is the thing. Thank you. And recently, the BLS reported that the first three months of 2021 were the best quarter of wage growth since at least 2001. Now, my concern, to be frank, is that you know a misplaced diagnosis playing out with inflation could cause the Federal Reserve to prematurely raise rates and constrain wage and employment gains that have been beneficial to millions of Americans. This means that you know, if we do take that step back, millions of Americans, especially marginalized communities, will be left with limited opportunities to be employed at an adequate and livable wage. In fact, the FOMC is projecting multiple interest rate, rate increases before the end of 2023 and before uh, they project, project achieving the pre-pandemic unemployment rate. And at the June FOMC meeting, the median uh, FOMC members projection of the longer run unemployment rate was about 4%, correct? Yes, that's right. Now, yet yeah, before triggering the pandemic, the unemployment rate reached, uh, or rather before the pandemic, the unemployment reach, rate reached 3.5% without triggering inflation, correct? That's right, yeah. And in fact, in 2019, despite some pickup in wage growth, especially at the bottom, there didn't appear to be signs of the economy overheating. Um, and as you said in November 2019, that the benefits of long uh, expansion are only now reaching many communities and that there's plenty of room to build on the impressive gains achieved so far. So if indeed there was still room to expand in the months before COVID, um, that suggests that with time, the economy can return to a trend of GDP and employment above the one it was experiencing before the crisis. Now, do you believe this to be the case? Do you believe that the long term, uh, longer run implies that 3.5% is too low? And do you think that we will be able to reach lower unemployment and higher labor force participation levels than the pre pandemic ones? Oh, I, I have every reason to think, and I do think that we'll be able to get back to 3.5% unemployment. Um, participation is very much affected by the population. So that's population. I'm quite sure we can get to high levels of participation again. Okay, thank you. And to disaggregate a little bit of kind of this line between monetary and fiscal policy, um, what we saw was that the World, the World Bank recently summarized estimates from market forecasters that the United States may be the only country that will leave the pandemic with higher GDP than pre-pandemic projections had estimated. It's an enormous success, and that is GDP will actually be higher as a result or after COVID and on response to COVID. That some of the fiscal policy interventions, like the American Rescue Plan, stimulus checks, et cetera, uh, played a role in that outcome? 
Oh, yes, I think so. The, the, the forecast of many is that we will be by by the middle of next year, we'll be above the prior trend, not the prior level, but the prior growth trend, which is an incredible achievement. And I, I do it. I attribute it to the CARES Act and, and the, the fiscal policy uh, that went so far so fast. I think we'll, we'll in history get a lot of credit. Thank you very much.